You are welcome to Reproductive Health Segment with Dr. Ajayi. My name is Dr. Abayo Ajayi. And uh, today, you can, as you can see, it's the mood of Christmas. We're two days away from Christmas, and we have every reason to celebrate as a nation, as a station, and as individuals. God has been merciful to every one of us this year. Well, we are also seeing the end of the year 2010 and looking towards 2011. So today we're going to, I'm just going to try to respond to some of the messages I've received throughout the year. People have always had some questions, some of which I'm going to try to address during this program. And may, many of them have focused on this procedure of IVF, that how do you bring out the eggs? How do you replace the eggs? What determines what to do? And all this, some of these things we try to address on this program. What are the risks of IVF? We try to take as many as we can take today. And the, since it's the Christmas edition, my producers probably might decide to give me a few more extra minutes. Anyway, that's left for them. Now, we're going to start, you know, last week we spoke about the steps of IVF. So we're going to start from how we bring out the eggs today. Now, the, it, is, it does not involve any surgery. After we have given the patient the drugs, which depends on the regimen, which varies from two weeks to about four weeks, now we take the women to the theater, but we, we just give them very light sedation and local anesthesia. And it's just like doing a transvaginal scan. Through the vaginal scan, we are able to look at the follicles containing the eggs, and there's a special needle, very thin needle, that goes through, and then we bring out the eggs through the vagina. So we do not cut people in order to bring out these eggs. This procedure usually lasts about 15 to 20 minutes, and women rest about 30 to minutes to about one hour after, and they're ready to go home. Usually, this procedure is uncomplicated, and uh, people go home 30 minutes, one hour after the procedure. And now, when it comes to, when, once we have the eggs and we have the sperm, the rest is left to us in the laboratory. Then we decide whether we're going to do the conventional IVF if the sperm count is okay, or we're going to do what we call ICSI, or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Also now we have something, even an advancement on ICSI, which we call IMSI, which is intracytoplasmic morphologically selected sperm injection. We'll talk about that, I think, the next episode or so, which is a new invention that uh, we have started here in Nigeria. So we're going to talk about that anyway. So after the fertilization, we now do the replacement or the transfer, if you will. This transfer is completely painless. And we don't use any form of analgesia. We don't use any form of anesthetic. And this is just done, depends on how many eggs you have, you have and therefore how many embryos you're able to produce. We, we do either a day three or a day five transfer. I know some people do day two transfer. It's also OK. So it's either you're doing a day two, a day three, or a day five transfer. Now, for you to do, it's not everybody who can probably do a day five transfer because that's one other thing I get to hear all the time. Some people come after reading some things, they say, I want to do a day five transfer. Now, if you don't have enough embryos, you might not be able to do a day five transfer. People who have different uh, uh, things they look out for in order to choose the people that can do day five or who cannot do day five. Some people will tell you that, OK, if you don't have up to five embryos, good embryos on day three, you don't want to risk a day five, because you might not end up with enough embryos to transfer on day five. And we know that about 40% of embryos will not even get to the blastocyst stage. So those are the things that the doctor considers before deciding on the day that you're going to do your transfer. Like I said, transfer is completely painless. And so it's, it depends on the skill of the doctor and the experience. So, we can, the transfer is, the moment transfer is painful, you are not likely to get much results from the treatment. And so we try to make it as atraumatic as possible. Now, after the transfer, you wait for about two weeks to do a pregnancy test. That now tells us whether we have been successful or we have not. Now, there's some things that determine the success rate, apart from the clinic, the success rate of the clinic. There are some things that determine the success rate of a cycle. Okay, the most important being the age of the woman. Now, the younger the woman, the better the chances of conception. People ask me a lot about this, that why are you always talking about age? Because when it comes to reproduction in women, age is everything. Every other thing just pales to a, a distant second. Now, but are we saying that people who are older can't have babies? No, that's not what we're saying. 
We are just saying that the chances are better when you are less than 35. But of course, we know that 55-year-olds also get pregnant. But some of them, might, you might need to make some decisions, which might we are not uh, going to be talking about during this program. Now, after the transfer and you have done a pregnancy test, then if it is positive, two weeks after that, you are doing a scan to see the, how many babies you have, the viability, and so on and so forth. Because there is something called a chemical pregnancy and different from a clinical pregnancy. A clinical pregnancy is what we look forward to, whereby we can see the uh, fetal heart. Until we actually see a fetal heart, we don't say that you are successful because a chemical pregnancy is different in that you have a pregnancy test that is positive, but you never can demonstrate a fetal heart in the gestational sac. There actually, most of the time, there is even no gestational sac. So we do that, and then once that is done, some of the questions that you ask me again is, what are the risks of IVF? Am I saying that IVF is without risk? No. Now, but the, what we say is that the risks are very minimal, but when they occur, they are real, okay? So we say side effects or complications in IVF are rare, but they are real when they occur. Now, and that's when it really matters what the experience of the doctor that you're using. The commonest side effect or the common complication of IVF is hyperstimulation, when you produce more than enough eggs that are required. You produce too many eggs, okay? And another thing that can come, that can go wrong with IVF later is when you have more than multiple pregnancies, you know? Two, it's okay. Three, not more than three. Anything more than three is a little bit too much. But that depends on how many embryos were transferred in the first place. So many clinics will not want to transfer more than three embryos. I know sometimes patients request for more than this, but we always resist transferring more than three embryos. So I hope uh, we've been able to answer some of these questions that you've raised during the year. And I, I wish you a Merry Christmas, since Christmas is a few days away. And please do everything in moderation. I'll see you next week.